Today we will be learning about how to build an app Talk to Wikipedia using GPT-3 Streamlit, GPT Index, and OpenAI embeddings. You simply enter a topic you'd like to talk about. It retrieves that document from Wikipedia API, turns it into vectorized OpenAI embeddings, and then you can ask regular questions to it, such as when was the first computer. After a few seconds, we get a response from GPT-3. This is a much natural way of interacting with Wikipedia articles. What happens in the background is that our question gets turned into an OpenAI embedding and then is compared to the embedding space of the Wikipedia article. And then the relevant chunks are found and along with the question is sent to GPT-3 for a response. So this response is formulated with a process like that. We will be talking about Streamlit, which is a great way to build your apps using Python and turn them into web applications. We'll also be talking about GPT index, which provides data structures to deal with embeddings. And OpenAI embeddings is of course running in the background with the Ada002 engine. But in this case, GPT index will be taking care of the creating the embeddings and also executing the queries. You will need to pip install Streamlit. Its documentation is really straightforward, very easy to follow. Just go to documentation and then click get started and installation and for my system i simply just use pip install streamlit you will also need to have gpt index installed and then gpt index's documentation is a breeze as well you just simply pip install gpt index you will also have to have openai pip installed and you can find the instructions in openai's documentation it's pip install openai openai's documentation is very detailed and easy as well the reason why OpenAI embeddings are important is because it allows you to measure the relatedness of text strings. Because OpenAI's ADA embeddings turn your text into the vectorized embeddings, then you can quickly do semantic search, clustering, recommendations, anomaly detection, diversity measurement, classification, and much more. You can implement OpenAI embeddings directly from their API without using on top of frameworks such as GPT index. But in this case, we will be using GPT index. If you'd like to learn more about OpenAI embeddings, I've created a video just dedicated to that. I'll post a link in the description. If you follow along GPT index's starter tutorial, which comes right after installation instructions, it's very easy and you'll be up and running both with an embedding space and a prediction coming from GPT-3 right away. You'll just have to copy the Paul Graham essay from their GitHub repository. The link is right here. As you can see, this four lines of code turns Paul Graham's essay into an embedding space. You will also have to pip install IPython. This is to load and save the embeddings from index.json files. And this is just to query any question that you might want answered from the blog post that Jason Graham wrote about himself. I'm sorry, I meant to say Paul Graham. We will be going over the code in detail, but let's see how we can get our application running with Streamlit. All you have to do is type in Streamlit, run, and then the name of your file from your running directory. This is, of course, after you have pip install Streamlit and your script features some Streamlit elements in it. Once you do that, in a few seconds, it will display this message and launch a new window. It will take a few seconds for the app to completely launch, and this is running on local. For some reason, if the app doesn't launch properly, you can always control click it or copy and paste this into your URL bar. Let's examine what's happening on the page of our app. As you can see, there's an information that is displayed and then a header and then a question and an input box. The implementation of these is very easy. All I had to do was st.info for the information, st.header for the talk to Wikipedia with GPT header, Inserting emojis is very easy. It's between columns. And to change the color, you just say colon, name of the color, and then you have to use square brackets. As you can see, that line of code actually created this, and the previous info line code actually creates this. And the user input box is defined right here. Defining a placeholder was necessary, I believe, in my case, to be able to clear the box later on. There was no easy way to clear boxes, input boxes in Streamlit, and I had to search and find this, something like this, from their forum posts from other people experimenting with the same thing. 
Let's take it one step at a time and examine the code bit by bit before we do an overarching review. I have commented out everything that is related to Streamlit and making a prediction, and I've only kept the parts about embedding and dealing with Wikipedia. To debug your code, it would be nice to put some of the code in a function so that you can actually run this function separately as I'm doing here. I am simulating a user input to find an article from Wikipedia, and we're going to use the Visual Studio Code's debugging features to see what's going on. As you see, I put a red mark right here. When I run this program with F5 or with the debugger, the program will come to line 9 and then will halt, so we can go step by step. I also have additional folders and files, including the token. I'm going to delete these so that we can start from scratch. So let's run our code. This will be a nice exercise both to figure out what's happening within our code and also the ability to use the debug. After the script has done necessary imports, it has come to line 9 and I have halted. Here in this line, we are just connecting to the Wikipedia API. Now if you go line by line using this jump over icon, you can see that now we're going one by one. And in the debugger panel, actually, you can see all the variables and other things that are being formulated as we're going on. As you see, there our imports are right here as well. But let's see, let's take a look at our file structure. Once we come to this os.path.exists, our program is checking if a data folder exists. And after that, it's going to check for index, and then it's going to check for to be embedded. Why these names? I just came up with these names. Data folder will hold our return documents from Wikipedia, the text of them. Index will hold the embedded versions of them. And to be embedded will be any given article's text to be embedded. As we continue to run this, it checks if data exists, and it doesn't, and it creates our data folder. And then does the same for index, and index folder is created, and then does it for the to be embedded folder, and then creates a tokens and writes zero in it. This is just my way of coming up with keeping track of how many tokens I have used so far. This is an ongoing count. After that, we come to an LLM predictor. LLM predictor is a way that GPT index uses for you to be able to customize your models. Here we're using text of inches 003 at temperature zero. You can also define a prompt helper, which will help you with your prompts, input size, output size, and chunk overlap due to the structure of the embeddings. In other words, you can choose to overlap different parts of the embedding so that the meaning is better preserved. Here in these next lines of codes, I am setting a prompt helper, but I've never used it in the script. But here is how you can define it if you feel the need to use it. After that, we will come to our function. Our function will not run until we actually run it. After that, it will enter the function. To catch the lines of code within our function, I've also put another red mark, which will halt our program. Otherwise, it will just run the entire function, even though we are stopping it right here. So after wiki search on CPU is called, we enter our function. And at first, it gets all the file names from data. And then we strip the .json formatting from it. And then we get the page from Wikipedia from the user input. Here, in this case, the user input is CPU. Then we get the title of the page and then convert it to lowercase and then print it. Here we are printing CPU. This is the title that is returned from Wikipedia. The reason why this is important is because when we are writing our files, we don't want to write them that our users have mentioned, but we want to write them as it is returned as the title from Wikipedia. Here on line 44, we are creating a list with the names of all the files and then stripping the .json extension from them. And now we have a list because as we search for more articles, our data folder is going to grow, and we just want to keep running track of how many, which files exist. And here on line 51, we are checking if the title, which we are currently working with, in this case CPU, exists in the files.json. I just want to mention when you're running with the debugger, 
you can actually come over your variables and you can see if the what their assignment values are so we're checking if the title exists in our list of files and it does not so then it skips the title not in files underscore json which is true then it prints file not found because our data directory is empty then in this line it grabs the text of the page underscore pi which was returned from wikipedia related to cpus and then we just do a quick word count and then print the words so there's 7813 words in this article after that with open we are creating a json file with that title with an utf8 encoding because otherwise you will probably get some errors and then we're simply writing it watch what will happen at the data folder see cpu.json has been created and this is the text of it and then we move on and we continue to opening uh, opening this file i'm sorry writing it to be to the to be embedded folder because this file now needs to be embedded into OpenAI's embedding space. After that, we write this to be embedded file, I'm sorry, folder. And then on line 71, we're checking if this index actually exists under the index folder. If it does exist, we are simply just going to load it. But since in this case, it doesn't exist, we will go on to embed the text into an index. Now, simple directory reader is what we have imported from GPT index. This just reads all files in a directory and then converts them into embedding space. Since it reads all files, this is why we are actually having a separate folder for our current file to be in, so that once we embed it, we move to the index and then we delete this file. So this simple line of code uses OpenAI's embedding endpoint. I'm sorry, this simply reads it into documents and then we print the length of documents, which is one, which is the cpu.json. And then GPT simple vector index documents turns it into an index. Now this is well, this part connects to OpenAI's endpoint in the background and then gets the embeddings and assigns it to index. And here you can see we are importing it right here. After which time we simply get the index, as you can see, adding chunk and whatnot. It takes a few seconds, and after the next, after that, the next line just simply saves it and into the index folder. As you see, cpu.json file is created. This is a JSON file with the text and the embeddings of the document that we're dealing with right now. After which time, we move on to the to be embedded folder and then delete the document from there. As you see, to be embedded is cleared. And then we're simply returning Eddie now so that we can make queries on it and ask questions from that index. So now let's run our program once again with streamlit run talk to wikipedia.py. That just happens to be the name I gave it. And then re-examine what's going on. I might have forgotten to mention it earlier on, but you have to run this command from a command prompt. And you can start a command prompt in your terminal by clicking this arrow and then clicking on command prompt. And make sure if you've created an environment, that you are in the right environment. Let's just run this. I had a typo in Streamlit. I was typing Streamlist anyway, so this will start our application. And here we go. And now let's examine it side by side. This is where we were using our function. I just commented out, and the rest of the code is st.info, and now what info I want to display. This creates this element right here. Next is the st.header with the blue coloring and the sun classes emoji. And it corresponds to this. And then the user input, place text input, what do you want to talk about? And I just gave it a key one because we're going to have another text input, which is going to take our question. After that, I check make, to make sure that the user input is not empty. So if we were to enter to talk about any topic, for example, space, and click enter, as you can see, space.json file is created in data. To be embedded, it was created, but then quickly deleted because we have gotten the embeddings out of it. And now we come to a point where we want to take a question from the user. And this is this line, ask a question about the topic. And I have implemented an st.spinner element. This is the weight box, weight element, weighting element that is going to appear while we are querying the index. And the querying is as simple as just doing index.query question with the LLM predictor. You don't need this line if unless you're specifying a particular type of LLM. 
So when we ask a question such as what is space, the spinner activates with wait for it, then starts the querying for reaching out to GPT-3 with relevant information from space.json embedding and with the question. So this is a pretty slow process, but we're going to get an answer. It says space is boundless three-dimensional extent. And if we go to the space article in the beginning, it does mention that. But there's also a mathematical definition. For example, we can say, what is space in math? And then we get an answer in modern mathematics. So it's actually querying the text pretty well. Let's ask what Einstein thought. So let's ask our question and get an answer. Here we go. We get a totally different answer. This is just so much natural way of acting with the Wikipedia article. Now that we are doing space, we no longer have to connect to Wikipedia because now we have the original file plus the embeddings. Embeddings is what we are using. But if we were to change it to, let's say, computers, then the define the chunking process and the Wikipedia process activates, and now we get uh, computers.json. This code is not the perfect code. As you can see, it doesn't clear the question. But then it says Albert Einstein did not have any thoughts on computers because it's probably not mentioned in the article. But we can ask what was the first computer for example, and get an answer. It says first computer was the Manchester baby. So this is all very really cool. This works. Like I say, I'm going to put this file, the code, into my Patreon for my Patreon supporters. But be mindful that I am interacting with GPT index and Streamlit for the first time. This is a good starting point. It will give you ideas, but be careful with it and apply it to your own use. This is an expensive process. That's why I'm keeping track of the tokens. It seems like it's maybe not working right now, but this part of the code is supposed to open the tokens.txt and append to it the new count by adding. This was my way of just trying to keep track. And sd.write just simply writes the response over here. So this is pretty much it. Let's just do a final review of the code. But I just want to mention again that this is an expensive process. Each time we are using about almost 4,000 tokens. The cool thing about GPT index is that it prints in your terminal how many tokens are being used. So 1,000 token equals to 2 cents with text DaVinci 003. So each one of these responses are costing close to 8 cents. So it can add up pretty quickly. And if you have a bug in your code, you might get repetitive responses. Please be careful with that. Another thing to mention is that, as you see, we know we're here. We have actually specified that they are OpenAI key, although we are talking to OpenAI API, both to get the embeddings and then to do the querying. It's because GPT index automatically looks at OpenAI underscore API underscore key variable in your environment. So you're going to have to either have that in your environment variables for this to work, or that you will have to explicitly define it, most likely. Just want to quickly mention that you can deploy your apps as long as it works in the local to the cloud in a streamlet. All you have to do is just sign in and then you click on new app and you will have to connect your GitHub repositories link and whatnot into here. And when, you're, when your app is launching, it is actually looking into a requirements.txt file to ins pip install the requirements. Uh, this was this sufficed for me, OpenAI GPT underscore index. Just make sure whatever libraries you're importing that is external to standard Python library to specify them. You can actually find how to do that in their documentation as well. I will slowly scroll down the code if you like to copy it from this video, but I will upload this for my Patreon supporters. I'll put the link in the description. We also have a Discord channel if you like to talk about this stuff. Please come and join it. I'll put that link in the description as well. This was a lot of fun and it was an exciting process for me. And I hope you find it helpful and useful. Take care and see you in the next video.